Hey, it's Maximo and welcome to Maximo's Travels. This is day five of our epic Canadian Rockies trip. We hit the road early and go through high snowy mountain passes. We see not one, but two majestic lakes. We go to the Columbia ice field and walk on a glacier that's tens of thousands of years old. Get terrified on a skyway that's hundreds of meters above a valley floor. Drive the monumentally spectacular Icefields Parkway. Stop many, many times looking for wildlife until we finally spot our first live bear. And keep on driving until we reach our destination in Jasper. Join me. We had another huge day of touring in front of us. We checked out of our hotel in Canmore at around 7.30 a.m. and began a four and a half hour, 187 kilometer journey between Canmore and the Columbia Icefields Glacier Adventure. The roads were quite icy and there were briefly uh, flurries of snow off and on during our journey. We took it nice and easy and made our way to our first destination. Bow Lake. There's an excellent car park that overlooks the lake. We expected to see this. Unfortunately, it wasn't summer, and what we did see was this. It was truly spectacular. Unfortunately, the ice uh, covered the whole lake and we weren't able to see much in the way of its brilliant turquoise color. The temperature hovered around minus one Celsius. We stayed around 10 minutes and then headed off to our next destination, which was Pato Lake, only about five kilometers and seven or eight minutes drive away. Before long, we reached Pato Lake and the car park. By this stage, the sun had come out, which gave us a false sense of security as to what was to come next. It was supposed to be a short 700 meter or five minute walk from the Pato Lake car park to the lookout. But because of the treacherous ice and snowy conditions, it took a hell of a lot longer. It was closer to 25 minutes each way. I wasn't too bad, but uh, Joe's hiking boots just have absolutely no grip and she kept sliding all over the place. Even though the walk was treacherous, the sun came out and it looked like a magical winter wonderland. The view from the Pito Lake lookout was truly stunning. We continued driving towards the Columbia Ice Fields on Highway 93, the Ice Fields Parkway. Along the way, we saw more truly spectacular scenery.
a lot of time, effort and planning was spent in making this a perfect trip. If you're interested in following my itinerary, I have produced a one-page PDF of my itinerary that's available for free download from my Buy Me A Coffee storefront. Click on the QR code on the screen or use the link in the description. I've also created a paid 11-page detailed ultimate itinerary for the Canadian Rockies. It's an eight-day self-drive trip that includes tips and tricks, how to get there, accommodation, distances, maps. It's a fantastic guide that will save you time and effort in planning your perfect Canadian Rocky itinerary. We reached the car park of the Columbia Icefields Glacier Adventure around about midday. We had about three quarters of an hour before our timed ticket entry to the glacier ride. We climbed up some stairs and had a coffee from the Starbucks that was located inside the visitor centre. The tickets to the Columbia Icefield Adventure are timed. The attraction is open from the 1st of June to the 14th of October and it's dependent on the weather. I would strongly advise you to pre-book to avoid any disappointment especially during the peak periods of uh, July and August. There is a ticket office on site and it looked like people were buying tickets. Uh, bear in mind that we only came uh, just after the attraction opened on about the 5th of June, so it only been open for a few days. Um, I personally wouldn't risk going there without pre-booking. I'll leave a link to the site where you can buy tickets in the description. My prayers and well wishes go out to the people of Jasper who were hit by a terrible tragedy of the wildfires as at the time of editing this video in September 2024 both nine, Route 93 and access to the Columbia Icefield car park is open and the attraction is bookable so support the local community there by booking and going to see this marvellous attraction and I've got to say that this tour is one of the best organised tours I think I've ever been on. The first part of it was the walk on the glacier. First you got on a normal bus and went probably about three quarters of the way up uh, the glacier to a big uh, bus car park. We then transferred to a unique and massive four-wheel drive all-terrain ice explorer, one of only a few in the world. Originally from Alice Springs, right in the middle of Australia, <laughs> but I wanted a bit of a change and I couldn't really think of more of a change. <laughs> Going up from the middle of the Australian desert to the middle of the Canadian mountains. <laughs> pretty fantastic place to be. These are pretty cool vehicles, these are pretty cool buses with our ice explorers, but they're not exactly built for speed. So they're built for traction, they're built for push for power. Very, very slowly, but it can flow down hills or through valleys. You can sort of think of a glacier like a river for rice.
I could have spent hours on this glacier. It was such a surreal experience. Whilst there was quite a few people there, the sense of tranquility and uh, being in the wilderness um, is still with me today. It was quite cold there, the temperature between well below zero with the biting wind coming further up off the glacier. And we were fortunate that we planned for this trip with merino uh, underwear, heavy coats, scarves, gloves, waterproof hiking boots. And we were so lucky to get a fabulous sunny day with spectacular visibility of the glacier and its surrounding mountains. Sadly, our time on the glacier was just far too short and it was time to hop back on the bus and take the uh, Explorer up the steepest incline on any road in the whole of Canada. We managed this quite okay and got to the bus interchange to get off the Explorer bus and onto the normal bus for our next destination, which was the Skywalk. The drive was only a few minutes and about six kilometres away from the Columbia Icefield Glacier. We got off the bus and proceeded down a long walkway to the Skywalk. The views of the valley floor below were spectacular. And that's where we got our first glimpse of the Skywalk. It's suspended 280 metres or 918 feet above the valley floor of the Somwapta Valley. That skywalk was both exhilarating and terrifying all at the same time. We were told that the strength of this walkway was sufficient to hold 10 fully laden buses all at the same time. That didn't make it any less scary. If you've got an issue with heights, I would uh, get close to this, but certainly not on it. It was without doubt a marvellous piece of engineering. And we were so blessed to have nice sunny skies with perfect visibility. We thoroughly enjoyed our glacier walk and the sky walk. The tickets cost 116 Canadian dollars or around about 127 Australian dollars per person. We booked about four weeks in advance and I would highly recommend that you do so as well. I'll leave a link in the description as to where you can purchase your pursuit tickets. We made our way back to the bus stop and waited for the bus to take us back to the visitor centre. The Icefield attraction took around three hours from woe to go. We started off at about quarter to one and finished at about quarter to three. We were quite hungry and I think it was time for a late lunch or early dinner. We headed back to the Discovery Centre and sought out what there was to eat. We found a canteen style restaurant on the first floor of the Discovery Centre. They looked quite uh, busy. There was a huge seating area 
and a reasonable queue waiting to get served. We had a look at some of the prices and they sound quite reasonable. A reasonably good selection and a number of options for vegetarian and gluten free uh, people as well. I went for a vegetarian curry and Joe just had to try another poutine. After our dinner, we went outside on the deck adjacent to the restaurant. From here, there is spectacular views of the Columbia Ice Fields and car park. After making some purchases of t-shirts and fridge magnets from the extensive gift shop, we walked down back to the car park and headed on towards Jasper. I really did appreciate how all the major peaks around the ice fields are suitably labelled with their elevation. It was a really nice touch. Because of the wildfires in the Jasper area, this is probably as far north as you can get. The Icefield Parkways Route 93 is currently closed to visitors and likely to be that way for some time. As at the time I'm editing this video, in early September 2024, the Jasper National Park is still closed to visitors and likely to be that way for the rest of the season. If you're looking to go to Jasper, I'd be looking to go in 2025 for the summer season. I'll leave links in the description so you can check where the roads are open and the town of Jasper is open for visitors. I was able to obtain a map of the area around Jasper that was burnt and as you can see it's quite extensive. I can only imagine what the countryside must look like now. My thoughts and prayers go to all the affected people of the Jasper Township. Our final stop for the day was the Athabasca Pass Lookout. This provided spectacular views of the pass as well as the nearby mountain ranges that included Mount Edith Clavel. We continued on to our final destination, Jasper, and our accommodation for the next few nights, the Alpine Village Resort. This is nestled on the banks of the Athabasca River. Due to the wildfires, the resort is closed for the 2024 season. I will do a separate review of this resort in an upcoming video. I would have to say that this was one of the best days on our epic Canadian trip. We saw lakes, glaciers and had a terrifying skywalk. A magnificent and tiring day. I do hope you've liked this video. If so, please hit that like and subscribe button. And hit that notify bell so you'll never be missing a future video release. If you'd like to support my channel, please consider buying me a coffee. Until our next instalment from the Canadian Rockies, you take care and bye now. Music